Hey, it's Alex here, and in this video, I'm going to show you the exact method that I'm using to find winning products. So we're going to go into my laptop in a minute. I'm going to find a winning product live using varied um, different strategies, and then I'm going to take that product into my ads manager and then break down the full targeting, the ad sets, the, the campaign structure and everything. So you know exactly how to target that product. So you have the best possible chance of finding a profitable ad set that you can scale. So stay tuned. Okay, so now I'm going to try and find a winning product. Um, so the best way I believe to find winning products is to utilize your Facebook newsfeed. So what I'm going to do is just go to Facebook and check out um, if there's any winning products on my feed and then potentially test one of those. Uh, so at the minute I've got a, an app called Turbo Ad Finder enabled. So what you'll see is just purely um, ads on my newsfeed and most of them will be dropshipping ads. So I'm going to check like the engagement and stuff of each ad. So this one's doing pretty well. 12,000 shares, 10,000 comments, 45,000 likes. Uh, not sure what the product is, but this potentially could be something that I could test. Um, looks like it solves the problem anyway, so it looks like it's got winning potential. Uh, here's another one, like a neck massager. Not as good on the engagement, but still doing okay. Um, again, another product that I could test. Uh, this is quite a saturated product. I've seen this everywhere, um, so I probably wouldn't go and test this, but Again, it's a product that you could go and test. Uh, no, nah, I'm not going to do that one. I've seen this around a lot as well, this kind of posture seat thing. So what I do is every day I just come in and just check um, for potential uh, winning products. So here's another good one. So this potentially could be a product that you test. It looks like it solves a problem. It's doing well, pretty engaging ad. It's a pretty good ad as well that you could copy. So best just to scroll through your newsfeed and see what comes up and use this as inspiration. It's it's better than using like like a third party product research tool where they give you winning products. It's best to just use your own newsfeed. It's a necklace thing here. Um, so if I can't find any products here, what I do is I go to my list of I have a huge database of Facebook pages which run successful ads. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and grab um, a random. Facebook page from that list now and then I'm going to take a look at it see what ads they're running and then there so what I've done is gone into my database and I've got a link um, to a, a Facebook page or a Facebook satellite page which it, it normally launch successful ads so I'm just gonna go and spy on them see what they're uh, promoting so I'll just paste that in there and then what I do is I go to their info and ads section here so I can see what ads they're running and then see if they've got any successful ads uh, that I could potentially copy or the product that I could copy. So as you can see, they are running some ads. They've got these indestructible shoes. Again. So when, when you go to the info and ad section of a Facebook page and they're running multiple ads for the same product, so as you can see, all these are like the same or similar ads for the same product. It's obvious that they're scaling this product. They've got like retargeting campaigns. They're testing different ad creatives and so forth. So it's clear that they're scaling this product. So what I'm going to do now to verify that it is a winning product, I'm going to right click here. Then I'm going to copy the video URL. I'm going to go into a new tab and paste it. I'm going to check the engagement of the ad because obviously what we've just seen there doesn't show the engagement, but now we'll be able to see it. So I'll just double click there as well. And then we can see the ad in live action uh, so so obviously it's doing very well it's got 206,000 uh, likes 16,000 comments almost 90,000 shares so then what I'll do is I'll check through the comments to see if they're positive um, so things like this so is this available so there's clear buying intent from this potential customer so people are obviously interested in it so so what I'm doing is just looking at like People, when people ask for the price of the product or how do they get this product, it shows clearly that this product's in demand and, and that the people actually want to buy the product. Because just because something's got loads of views, so it's got 88 million views, doesn't necessarily mean that people are converting to a purchase. Um, so you need to be able to see, look, in USA, Colorado, Denver, where can I find one? So obviously people want this product. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go check this product out on AliExpress. So firstly, I'll go to their product page. Okay, so I'm on that product page here, and now I'm just going to check out a few different uh, things. So you can see they're selling it for £52. Uh, they're called Indestructible Shoes. I'm just going to check, uh, see what traffic they're driving to their website. 
So they're clearly doing pretty well, like over 100,000 uh, views last month. And up here, they were getting up to almost a quarter of a million views. So they probably launched the product around this time. And as you can see, their store has took off. Um, so it's clear that this product has winning potential and is a winning product for this store. They've got a de decent landing page, lots of reviews and stuff. Um, so now I'm going to check the product out on AliExpress. So what I'll do is just copy the main part of the uh, product title. Go on to AliExpress. Okay, so now I'm just going to paste the um, title of the product into the search bar. So indestructible shoes. And then what I need to do is sort by orders here to try and find the exact product. So I'll click orders there. And as you can see, here's the product here. Um, so then I'm just going to check is the supplier any good. So ePack is free, so that ticks that box. Processing time two days, which is good. So it's ticking all the boxes so far. It's priced reasonably well because it's fairly cheap. Um, so you obviously got the free shipping here, the free packet, and it's not that expensive either. So you can probably get a decent margin on this product. So now I'm going to check out the page. Okay, so I'm on the product page for this AliExpress supplier. Um, so I'm going to check out how saturated the product is. So I'm just using a thing called saturation inspector here. Um, and it basically tells you um, the other Shopify stores selling this product. Uh, so as you can see, it's 144, and it says it is fairly saturated, which I would expect with the product that's gone this viral. Um, doesn't mean that I can't go and test it, but obviously it's going to be um, fairly competitive, so I just have to make sure my video ad is really good. Um, as you can see, they've even included video footage here on the supplier page, um, so you could potentially use this. Obviously, you need to overlay um, the Chinese writing with uh, English writing. So one more thing I'm going to check before I go ahead and test this product and do the targeting. I'm just going to check uh, the orders over time. So I'm just going to copy and paste this link here. Okay, so now I'm in my dropshipping center. And what I'm going to do is look at the orders over time for this product. So I'm going to go on product analysis. And then I'm going to paste the URL here. And then I'm going to search. So I'm just going to look at the orders over time. Um, so as you can see, the order volume for this product, even though it's gone really viral and it's quite saturated, is really low for this supplier. Dropshippers use you are just using different suppliers um, on AliExpress, or they're holding the um, product in stock, or or they're holding inventory for the product and are not using AliExpress. They're using like a different supplier. So I definitely go ahead and test this product. So what I'm going to do now is go into my Ads Manager and I'm going to do the targeting, the exact targeting breakdown what I do for this product to give myself the best chance at stimulating a profitable campaign for this product. Okay, so now we're going to create a campaign for this product and we're going to use, we're going to test 10 different ad sets, so 10 different interests um, for the product that we just found um, using the product research methods that I've just shown you. So what we're going to do is do a conversions campaign. So what we'll do is we'll call this, um, so we're going to call the campaign a purchase campaign and then just label it with the product name. So indestructible shoes. Copy that. And I'm going to click continue. And then I'm going to label the ad set there. And then once we've decided the interest for this ad set, we'll also put the interest targeting here so we can identify it among the 10 ad sets that we're going to create. Then we want our pixel to be purchase. Okay, so now we're going to do our audience targeting. So firstly, what I'm going to do is get rid of this here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy and paste all the best e-packet countries into uh, my location. So I'm just going to go to a Word document where I've got my e-packet countries saved. I'm going to copy this. So what these are is all the best e-packet countries. So um, ones which have e-packet and their affluent countries, ones which are likely to buy things online, so like Australia, United States, so forth. These are the best countries to target, especially when you're um, just testing a product. So I'm going to go back to here. I'm going to click Add Locations in bulk here. And I'm going to click Location Type Countries. And then I'm just going to paste that in here. And then match locations. And then click. Also, you want to save this so you can keep reusing it so you don't have to keep copying and pasting it again. Um, 
They'll also, this will also be in the description of this video so you can get access to all these countries just by checking out uh, the description below. So add the locations and put list name as like ePacket countries and then click save list. Okay, so then you want to do the age range. So I'll say for a product like this, the age range is going to be probably about 22. And then I'd probably keep it to 65 plus. Um, you want it to be as broad as possible, really. Um, but you don't want the age to be too low because people under a certain age just don't buy stuff as much as older people. So, And then you want the languages, obviously, to be English, if your store is in English. And then now we're going to do the detail targeting for the first ad set. So... What I like to do is go back to the product page um, for the uh, product that we're selling uh, to, so the AliExpress product page, to try and find keywords um, that I can use as inspiration for the um, targeting. So what I do is go to product details, and then I'm just looking for keywords related to the product, like military, safety boots, and army shoes and stuff, proof boots, punchy proof boots, and I'm going to use try and find these keywords and um, interests within the Facebook Ads Manager. So it's a great way to try and find uh, things to use for your targeting. The main function of this uh, shoe and product is that it's a steel toe cap type boot that protects your feet and that it's really durable. So what I'm going to do is type in the kind of main problem of the product that which it solves. So it's a steel toe see if anything comes up so here we've got we've got steel toe boots which is exactly basically what the product is so what i do is just keep that as one interest to target and test um, first so i'd literally just leave it like that the audience is a bit small probably i like at least one million but because the targeting is so specific to what the product actually is um it's got a chance that it's going to work so i just keep you don't need to expand interest or anything then i'd go on edit placements here and then what I do is get rid of all that and just click feeds and suggested videos. And then you just want your Instagram feed and then get rid of everything else. So you want to get rid of stories as well. So all we've got is suggested videos, feeds and uh, feed in the Instagram. Okay, so now we need to do the budget and schedule. Um, so we're going to keep it a conversions uh, campaign. So you don't need to change that. Um, you also don't need to add in a cost control. Uh, you don't need to do anything with that um, because we're just doing automatic bidding anyway. So you want the daily budget to be, put it at £10. And then you want set a start and end date. And you want the start date to be midnight of the day. So unless it's really early in the morning um, when you're launching your ads. Uh, but if it's like midday or evening, then you want to, schedule it to start at midnight so it has a full 24 hours to to run for the first day so it can optimize better um, then you just want the end date to be some random date far away and then here the conversion window so a lot of people get confused about this this all this is is basically you're telling facebook to serve your ad to people who are likely to take these actions within the given time frame so if you choose one day after clicking, then Facebook will serve your ad to people who are most likely to carry out the action that you're optimizing for, so purchase, within 24 hours after clicking your ad. So here, if you choose this one, then Facebook will serve it to people who are most likely to purchase your product after seven days of clicking your ad. And then this is one day after clicking or viewing or seven days after clicking or viewing. I personally like the one day after clicking or viewing as... I just feel like it converts the best, uh, but you can definitely test out different ones. To be honest, it doesn't make that much difference, um, especially with low priced products. Um, but I just go with one day after clicking or viewing. And then everything else can stay the same. And then because we've chose the steel toe boot as our interest, what I'm gonna do is wipe that here, just so I know this, I can identify this ad set. So I'll just put um, steel toe for the interest and then I'm just going to copy and paste all that so I can use it for the ad. Click continue. Now I'm not actually going to create the ad in this video because I'm just showing you how to do the targeting and the interest but obviously you'd have a video ad ready um, probably already posted on your page 
So you can just use an existing post um, for this uh, ad and then just select it down here and obviously make sure that um, it complies with Facebook uh, down here and then you just click confirm here. Okay, so now we've launched the ad set and it's in review. What we're going to do is just click here and then I'm going to duplicate the ad set and I'm going to do, I'd normally do about 10 copies so I'd put nine in there so I have 10 overall and then keep it the original campaign so you have one campaign and 10 duplicate ad sets within that campaign and then each ad set is going to have a different interest so you're going to basically target different people so you can test a bunch of interests quickly um, to see which ones performing best which ones give you the best return on ad spend and then you can scale from there so click duplicate and then all we're going to do is just amend the interests within each um, campaign so within each ad set so as you can see, here's the so here's the whole campaign here, the indestructible shoes, and then here's the ad set and the ad, ad set and the ad, ad set and the ad, and that'll be ten of them um, for this campaign. So you need to go into each ad set and amend it. So we're going to go into this one here, and then as you can see, it's the copy of the original one, and then all we need to do is just amend the targeting here. So I'll just come down here, click suggestions and I'll just click a different interest, so workwear would be a good one because it's a work type boot, so I'll just click that there and then obviously I'd get rid of the original one so there's potential reach, fewer than 1000, that must be a mistake because the audience here is quite big and then also you need to amend the, obviously the description up here, you just put workwear as the interest um, just so you can identify the ad set then, I'd go on to the next ad set here you don't need to amend anything with the ad. So you click there. And then I'm just going to click another interest. Uh, click suggestions here. So personal protective equipment, that could be a good one because it is like protective footwear. So I'd definitely test that. Get rid of this steel toe boot. And just copy and paste that interest there. And then put it into the description of the ad set just so I can identify it and then I'd literally just repeat this process throughout all the different ad sets here so I've got 10 different ad sets 10 different interests which are really targeted towards the product and then I'd launch the whole campaign so you've got a very different bunch of interest to test and then what you do after like two to four days or about two days You'd analyze the data and see which ones are performing best and then you'd narrow it down so you probably have two or three which are, are making sales and which are profitable um, as long as your video ad and everything is good and then obviously you'd work at scaling those and kill all the rest. So without testing all these different interests you're not going to know what's going to work so the best way is to just test as many as possible and then once, you've, once you can identify a winner, one that's profitable, then you just like scale from there. So. And then once, you, once you've done that, what you'll have here is you'll have your campaign here, so your purchase indestructible shoes campaign. And then if you click this here and then click ad sets, you'll have all your ad sets organized within that campaign, each labeled with a different interest and each targeted with a different interest. So then you can just come in here and once it's launched um, after like two days, you can just literally just analyze the data in here, see what your cost per click is, your CPMs, website content views, then your website add to carts, your initiate checkouts, your purchases, work purchase return on ad spend, your conversion value. You just look at all this data in here and obviously just the ones which aren't performing, you just disa disabled here. Um, so if that one's not performing, I'd kill that, I'd kill that, kill that, and then just keep the best performing ones and then start to scale from there. So it's really simple. You just want to test broad and you want to repeat this process with lots of different products. So you might have like a dog product, a cat product, a kitchen product, all within here. Then if you click your ad sets, you'll have loads of different ad sets um, in different niches and then you can just see which ones are performing the best. So it's the best way to um, to find a winning product is to have a general store and just do this with loads of different products and then I can guarantee it eventually you'll find one that just takes off and you'll know when you find a winning product because you'll just get consistent sales, you'll be profitable, you'll be making good money. So it's a much better way than just having like a one product or niche store and just trying to force a, a random product to work. You just want to test a bunch of products then transition um, over to that.
Okay, that's it for today, guys. I hope you found lots of value in this video. I hope you implement this right away. I hope it's cleaned a lot up in terms of how to find products, how to then target them so you can find a profitable ad set. So if you've enjoyed this video, then leave a like and a comment down below. I'd appreciate that. And if you're new here, be sure to subscribe, turn on notifications, and I'll see you in the next video.